Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to today's webinar, Five Ways to Automate Field Service Management with McCola. My name is Stephanie Harless, and I'm the Senior Enablement Manager here at McCola. We do know your time is valuable, and we appreciate you sharing some of it with us today. Now, I'd like to take an opportunity to introduce our presenters for today's webinar. Mike Pandel is the VP of Marketing for MSI and has over 15 years of experience marketing B2B and enterprise software. At MSI, Mike manages relationships and co-marketing activities with integration partners. We also have Ray Thomas, who's the VP of Sales for MSI, and he has 10 years of software sales and product management experience, including five and a half years at Microsoft, where he oversaw the marketing for Office. And finally, we have Vicki Basile, Alliance Manager at McCola. Vicki is the Certified Public Accountant and Professional Project Manager and has worked for one of the largest McCola customers for 10 years, responsible for IT and all ERP management and implementation products projects before joining McCola in November of 2014. Vicki is also responsible for managing the relationship between McCola and McCola's partners. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you everyone for attending today's webinar. We do know your time is valuable and we do appreciate you spending it with us. My name is Vicki Basil and as Stephanie mentioned, I am the Alliance Manager for McCola Software, which means I manage the relationships with our ISV partners, including MSI Data. As many of you know, McCola primarily serves the manufacturing and distribution space of the SMB ERP market. Essentially, if you are creating or distributing products, you are a good fit for McCola. We target small to medium-sized businesses with 50 to 500 employees, although we have customers with up to 10,000 employees. McCola has a global footprint in the U.S., Canada, Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa, and we are continuing to grow. McCola has been in business for over 40 years. During that time, over 8,000 customers have relied on McCola software to run their business. Our flagship product, McCola 10, is all-inclusive and scalable, allowing you to use the functionality you currently need and grow into the product over time, giving you more functionality at a better ROI. I mentioned earlier that we have serviced over 8,000 customers in 40-plus years. Here are a few logos of companies you may recognize, like White Castle, Bob's Red Mill, and Simple Green. There are thousands of customers you may not have heard of, that are integral to the supply chain and rely on McCola. With that, I will turn the presentation over to my esteemed colleague, Mike Pandel from MSI Data. Take it away, Mike. Thank you very much, Vicki and Stephanie. Thanks so much for uh, putting this presentation together for us today. So the title of today's presentation is Five Ways to Automate Field Service Management with McCola. A um, variety of, of uh, business processes that uh, ServicePro, the MSI product, manages for McCola customers. Primarily those are repair processes, ma uh, preventive maintenance processes, inspections, scheduling, and installations. Again, my name is Mike Pandel, um, and I run the marketing team here for MSI uh, and manage the McCola partnership uh, in connection with Vicki. Um, joining me today is Ray Thomas, who also runs our sales team. And uh, in today's presentation, we'll be covering a bit about who MSI is, what our Service Pro product does, the problems that it solves for our mutual customers. Uh, we'll, we'll ask a couple poll questions. Um, don't worry, nobody's going to be called upon. Uh, just uh, one-click answers to a couple poll questions we'll have for you today. Uh, Ray will walk through a demo of the Service Pro product, and then we will conclude with a Q&A. Um, so to get started here, who is MSI? We are a software company focused on field force automation, and we have a couple uh, key pieces of expertise when it comes to field force automation. Primarily, uh, we, work, we work with companies who have field service processes. Um, in, in addition to service processes that, sur that uh, surround a work order, we also have expertise with mobile uh, when it comes to mobile inspections and mobile field forms. The name of our product is ServicePro. 
in case the product name Service Pro sounds uh, familiar to some of those uh, uh, those Macola customers on the on the line, it is in fact the same Service Pro product that that uh, has been integrated with Macola for some time. Although it is a, effectively a brand new product that was rebuilt uh, from the ground up as a cloud and mobile application. Um, and uh, in addition to the new technology stack it was built upon, it, t it moves forward uh, f over 15 years worth of deep field service management functionality. Um, our headquarters here at MSI are in Milwaukee where we have 65 employees, over a third of which are in product development and our an entire software engineering team is based here in our Milwaukee headquarters. In terms of the industries that uh, MSI serves, you can see several of them here. Uh, key industries for us, and, and obviously for Macola as well, are manufacturing and distribution. Uh, other industries where we have a, a large market uh, share are medical equipment, uh, construction, and HVAC. And in those industries, we have some of the largest uh, players as well. Some names here that you, you may recognize, such as Charter Spectrum, uh, Komatsu, uh, MCOR as well, and, and many uh, Caterpillar dealers. Uh, there's a customer here we would like to just highlight briefly, uh, a mutual customer of MSI and Macola, Total Energy Systems. Uh, they are a, an upper Midwest based distributor of Kohler power systems uh, and they manage their entire business with Service Pro uh, integrated to the Macola ERP system um, across 50 users and uh, uh, six locations. So what does the Service Pro product do for their business ultimately in terms of benefits? Um, first of all, uh, with the uh, Total Energy Systems field technician team, it was important for them to be able to track and improve upon the billable utilization of their, their technician team. Uh, and with the Service Pro product connected to Macola, they've been able to increase that over 30%. Um, another key measure of the efficiency uh, and also the uh, profitability of a service organization is the ratio of uh, technicians to office workers. So when they began with Service Pro, that was around a two to one technician to office worker ratio. Now it is four to one. Uh, and finally, uh, one of the most common issues we hear service organizations or service departments within a manufacturing and distribution company uh, deal with is uh, slow billing, the, the challenges in, in uh, being able to bill customers rapidly, accurately, and, and uh, realize the benefits of improved cash flow that goes along with that. So in the case of Total Energy with Service Pro and Macola, that process is less than 24 hours from the time when service is performed to when the invoice is out the door uh, and the cash flow has improved significantly. So uh, when it comes to what uh, automating field service can do for a service department or a service organization, there are really five keys we want to uh, present to you today as, as things that uh, can benefit your business uh, with automation. The first is, is getting paid faster, uh, incre in, uh, increasing the speed at which you're able to invoice customers and collect, uh, collect cash for the service you've performed. Um, utilization, uh, a higher percentage of the time of uh, the technician uh, force being utilized on billable work. Uh, just better field intelligence, more intelligence in terms of what's happening in the field, visibility to where uh, where technicians are, uh, visibility to what has been taking place in the field. Um, first time fix rate, uh, re reducing those instances in which a technician needs to go back a second time to a customer site as those are um, significant eroders of profitability. Uh, and then finally, just customer communication. Uh, there's many, many ways that uh, field service technology can improve and automate customer communication, uh, which is critical in a, a business like service. Um, in terms of the uh, field service management uh, space, uh, technology has, has made tremendous strides for service organizations and continues to. Uh, you can see it here, results of a recent survey, over 92% of organizations are have realized that they actually need to, need to adapt their service models to keep up with customer needs. Uh, customer expectations have risen and moved alongside technology and many service organizations realize their need to, uh, to accommodate. Uh, and finally, many, many companies, uh, a high percentage are investing in field service technology today. Um, what are they trying to accomplish? Uh, better performance, uh, more visibility to field activity, uh, and what are the main considerations when it comes to looking for new technology? What we hear are 
uh, ease of use. They do not do not want uh, their employees to have to struggle with, with a new system when it comes to managing service and also integration to current systems. We know uh, what a major undertaking integrations are. Uh, we know that that's that should be an afterthought for for your business, uh, and and those are two of the most important things we've taken into consideration in building our Service Pro product. Uh, so with that, we want to uh, ask you a poll question here. This will be the first of two poll questions. Um, so how does your company currently manage your field service operations, managing things such as scheduling? Uh, collecting data in the field by the technicians and service work orders. So if you could just select the option that uh, is most applicable to your organization, we'll pause for uh, 10 or 15 seconds here, let you answer that, and uh, we will move on. And there is the results. Uh, this is Vicki. Mike, if paper or other okay. manual efforts, 43%. Um, that doesn't surprise okay. me at all. Uh, McCola customers uh, who are on this call are probably looking for a, a system, so that's not surprising at all. Um, spreadsheets, not surprising as well at 19%. Um, other, I, you know, that I'd be interested to know maybe at the end of the call, you know, what kind of systems they're using so we can talk about, um, you know, moving that data to MSI if they decide to move forward. What are your thoughts, Mike? Uh, I appreciate you, you mentioning that. Yes, paper or manual methods is, is typically most common for us as well. Um, uh, often paper or manual methods and spreadsheets go together, um, but uh, the majority of the, the customers that we work with are, are, are adopting their first uh, field service management system, uh, at least the first uh, to be moving Sounds from like paper or manual methods than, than uh, legacy service management systems, so thank you. All right, uh, briefly I'd like to also cover what, what it is that the Service Pro product does and what problems it solves for service organizations or service departments. Uh, so what is it really that, um, what are some of the most common business problems that service organizations uh, are experiencing that they're looking to try to solve? Ultimately what we're trying to do is solve each one of these and, and the benefit of doing that is the threefold. One, improvement when it comes to service revenue the ability to capture more service revenue and improve cash flow, uh, the ability to just make the entire team more efficient. So slow billing, um, very, very common issue. Um, we can accelerate this uh, several ways, and uh, we'll show you that in the demo, but it's uh, primarily a combination of, uh, one, the ability to capture field data uh, on a mobile app by the technician, have that automatically go into the Service Pro system, and with the integration to McCola, have that, that work order be closed out and create a sales order in McCola for um, rapid uh, movement of billable line items from the technician in the field all the way through to the invoicing process uh, without having to key in the without having to key in the information. All right, uh, duplicate data entry. Uh, we we solve that through the combination of uh, the mobile piece being connected to the back office as well as the integration with McCola. Uh, field office communication is in large part automated. Um, we we also can help. Uh, you provide shorter, more accurate ETA windows to your customers in terms of when a repair can be completed, when a technician can arrive. Uh, certainly that's one of many important measures of customer experience. Um, we, along with McCulla, help solve issues of unproductive time by technicians, uh, lost revenue, um, the blind spots. Uh, we're, we're really helping to eliminate blind spots when it comes to field visibility uh, in your service organization or service department. Um, we eliminate data silos, um, you know, one of which, as we just heard in the poll question, might be a spreadsheet or a, a legacy system that doesn't talk to McCola. Uh, and then finally, the return trip, uh, the ability to have a technician uh, well prepared prior to, to arrival such that uh, they know they'll be able to solve the issue prior to, to getting there to the, to the extent that, uh, that uh, technology will enable. All right, so uh, you've just heard about some of the most common issues that we hear about from, from uh, customers and prospects about service, uh, service business issues they would like to solve. Uh, with that, we'll uh, open up the second poll question. If you could uh, select which one of these uh, is most applicable for your organization. And it looks like the winner is lack of visibility and intelligence about field operation at 38%. 
uh, slow billing or cash flow at 33%, suboptimal billable technician utilization, that's a mouthful, at 19%, and poor customer communication at 10%. Very good. Thanks, Stephanie. I appreciate that. Uh, very, uh, those certainly sync up with what we hear most often. Uh, and uh, as we get into the demo here in, in a few moments, we hope you'll see that uh, particularly with those two both lack of visibility and intelligence about field operation and slow billing. We hope that you'll you'll be able to see uh, how we, along with Macola, can help you solve those problems. I agree, Mike. That's um, those are very common results, having come from one of the largest uh, service uh, users in the old Exact Synergy product. That customer I was with, we saw all of those things. We would almost wish you could stack rank them instead of having to choose one because I think every one of those issues are an issue for a large field service organization. Great. Thank you very much, Vicki. All right. Um, just before we get into the demo itself, I wanted to present you just with a, a visual here of the Service Pro product. Really, what, what is it that it does? We think of field service management really in three kind of main buckets. Uh, the back office service operations piece, which helps to manage things like service calls, creation of work orders, management of uh, customer equipment assets that may be at a customer site and need uh, repair or ongoing preventive maintenance, uh, service contracts, uh, service agreements, contracts, whatever you, you call that. We manage that uh, to a, a great degree of detail uh, and provide a lot of automation around contracts and preventative maintenance. Uh, the scheduling piece, basically the visible uh, schedule that's being updated automatically throughout the day uh, when it comes to uh, automated uh, communication with technicians, uh, rapid, simple drag-and-drop assignment of appointments to technicians, um, as well as the ability to uh, see where a customer or a technician is relative to a customer site, uh, and uh, just providing a lot of visibility as well as efficiency in that scheduling piece. Finally, the mobile app itself, uh, which would be in the hands of the technician out in the field, and that with that mobile app, the technician is recording everything that they're doing. Um, uh, typically, it's all of the billable line items, uh, labor time, parts applied, tasks, or miscellaneous charges, uh, as well as the ability to uh, roll all that information up to the equipment asset that they're working on to to add a rich service history. And as you can see, we are supported then by the Macola system, which is the system of records for customers, inventory, sales orders, invoicing, and more. Um, uh, finally, uh, just a few benefits of Service Pro that we'd like you to just uh, pay attention to as you see the demo here in just a moment. Um, why is it the customer serve, choose Service Pro today? One is the depth of field service functionality. Uh, over 20 different verticals, customers in 20 different verticals have informed the functionality in this system. Uh, you'll see it is very deep um, uh, without sacrificing the technology that you'd, you'd use to uh, be a user of the system and and uh, especially the user experience. So uh, the user interface was built specifically for service work with input from real customers um, when it comes to how best to most efficient, efficiently manage their service processes. And how do we work with Macola? Uh, there are really four main touch points, although there, there are more than this, and I'll show you a diagram in just a moment, but um, Macola is the system of record for customers and information about those customers, for a system of record for inventory. Um, uh, service Pro is the system of record for the service work order. So the, the paradigm here is that Service Pro manages the service work order, and that communicates with Macola uh, to become a sales order for invoicing purposes once the work is complete. And as you can see, there are many more touch points as well in the integration. Uh, this integration was actually built by another uh, excellent McCullough partner, BirdDog, who uh, built and maintains this integration. And uh, happy to spend some more time uh, going through this in depth with anybody who'd like to, to learn more detail about how the integration works, what the touch points are. We won't go into every single one right now, but suffice it to say that uh, it's a well thought out integration and uh, it works very well. Uh, and with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Ray Thomas, who will walk you through a demo of the Service Pro system. Thanks, Mike. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Ray Thomas with MSI 
very excited to show you Service Pro today. As Mike mentioned, there's really three main areas of the software, back office, scheduling, and mobile. Um, right now you're looking at the back office uh, capabilities, and this is really designed for um, somebody sitting at a desk most of the day, typically in the service department. Um, this might be one role doing multiple jobs. This might be um, multiple people, each with their own roles. Um, but today, I'm working for this fictional service company called Veritech Equipment, um, and I'm going to take a service call. We're in the, the call capability of our software right now. You can see some of our dashboards in terms of um, the metrics. I know visibility was something that people um, were interested in in that poll, so you can see right away these dashboards give me a little visibility into um, what's going on in within my service organization. Um, and I'm going to take a call. Um, and you can see I can start typing, um, and I can type a name. Um, I can type a uh, serial number. Um, let's see if one, yeah, I can type a serial number or equipment name. Um, but let's just say that Pam Rich is calling, and you can see as I type, it, it filters and searches um, as I type. And if I click Pam's name, um, Pam is calling in from Saratoga Medical, um, and I can say that Pam called to say, um, that uh, generator number three is beeping in an odd way. Um, so I can take notes. Um, this screen is really designed for a uh, you know, service agent or somebody um, to take everything um, while they're on the phone with the customer. Um, and a big piece of what we do is track um, customer assets. So on this screen, um, I can see uh, what assets the, the customer is calling about. Um, and here you can see, you know, here's um, generator number three, standby generator number three. Um, again, I can search this, or if they had given me the serial number, when Pam had given me the serial number when she called in, um, I could look it up um, that way as well. Um, so Pam is calling about generator number three. I can see the warranty expired in 2009, but she does have a uh, same day SLA contract with us um, through August of 2019 that covers parts and labor. Um, so I can give her that information while um, she's on the phone and, and maybe that's reassuring to her. Um, or I could tap on history and I could see all the, the times we were out here servicing this equipment. Looks like last time we were out here was uh, March 28th and I can drill into um, everything that uh, we did for um, Saratoga Medical on this piece of equipment at that time. Looks like we replaced the oil. Um, so that's all um, information that, that uh, might be um, good, to, good to know um, as I'm on the call with the customer. Um, hopefully everyone can uh, hear me okay. Um, if you can't, uh, shoot us a note in the, the Q&A tool um, to let us know and we'll, we'll see to try to do what we can. Um, but uh, what, a couple other things that might be helpful as I'm on the phone with Pam, um, I can see that uh, there's a credit alert. Um, we didn't really define a credit a limit, a credit limit, which is they're over their zero dollar credit limit. But um, those are some of the things that we can um, pull over from Macola um, and alerts. You know, maybe they're not paying their bills or something like that. Um, I can also drill in and see site details, service hours, parking, things like that or site comments um, about you know where I'm supposed to go, or what the lockbox code is, things like that. Um, so that, that's all information that I can see while I'm on the phone with Pam. Um, and again, highly configurable software. If you want to add fields, we can add fields to any screen. If you want to remove fields, uh, we can remove fields. If you want to rename or hide things, we can do that too. Um, and if you don't want to use um, our screens for this, if you want to you know, use something else or um, just go straight to a work order, we can do that too. Um, again, highly configurable software designed around um, you know, accommodating your process. Um, and um, one of the things I can do is uh, insert a photo. Um, you know, maybe I want to put in a photo of the generator, and maybe we've already got this in here. Um, and that can be tied to the asset. I'm just doing it manually for demo's sake. Um, and then maybe I want to give some specific instructions to the technician. Um, fix the beeping generator. Um, this is the appointment, and this appointment is going to show up on our schedule board, which I'll get to in just a moment. Um, right now you're looking at really an empty work order. 
Um, and as we go through our demo today, you'll see um, some information coming back in around um, uh, you know, what the technician does in the field. Um, so uh, next I am going to go to my schedule board. So, so far I've uh, created a work order, I have scheduled it, and um, now we can see here's this appointment down here for order 1183 um, to go service the generator. And here you're looking at my dispatch board. I can see all my technicians. I can see work orders they're assigned. I can see their status. Um, and we can um, use all of that information to make um, scheduling decisions. Um, another piece of information I can use um, to make a scheduling decision is uh, skill sets. So if I know that this particular appointment is going to require somebody uh, mechanical, um, I can come up here and here's all the different capabilities I can use to filter um, my technicians down. If I pick uh, mechanical, you'll see this list of technicians will shrink to about four. And so then I can say, okay, um, looks like uh, Ray is really the only one who's free right now. Um, we got an SLA with this customer, so we need to get out there. Um, so I'll go ahead and schedule this for Ray. And um, now that'll um, go out to Ray's mobile device. Um, uh, but again, a lot of different fields can be used. You can have custom fields, you can have technician teams, you can have branches or divisions or um, different regions, if you will. So um, maybe you have uh, north, south, east, west uh, branches or, or regions and you want to filter you know, based on those and have different dispatchers be looking at um, all of that information. Uh, that's something that we can do, or maybe you have uh, you know two different product lines, uh, maybe residential and commercial, or something like that, um, and you can separate that out in terms of divisions. Um, so um, those are all the different capabilities in terms of scheduling. Um, one thing I forgot to show is the map down here, um, and when I click on a, a work order, it's actually going to jump to where this work order is. Um, so that could be based on the equipment GPS, if it's a piece of equipment um, that moves around, um, or it could just be based on um, site GPS um, in terms of where the customer's site is. Um, and so I can see here's a piece of equipment. If I zoom out, I can see, okay, who's the closest technician? Um, there's my GPS um, coming from my phone or tablet as of a few seconds ago. Um, and we can see maybe I'm scheduled to be close by or something like that. Um, the other thing I'll point out is um, we've got these different colors here, and those colors correspond to these statuses down here in the bottom left. Um, so we can see uh, Ray's uh, visit at Aurora Healthcare this morning um, is in the work completed status, so we know that he's done with that visit. Um, some of these others are closed, and so that's just, again, if you're talking about visibility, if we go back to our poll, um, this gives you visibility not just into where technicians are, but also the status of their work. Um, are they done? Are they running over? Are they on time? Are they where they should be? Uh, that kind of a thing. Um, these statuses are totally customizable by you. You can choose what the, the labels are. You can choose what the colors are. Um, again, 100% configurable. And um, another thing, too, is if I want to maybe plan out my dispatch board for a few more days, um, so if I want to kind of zoom out, if you will, um, I can take a look at the next few days. Uh, maybe you're not scheduling by the hour, but you're scheduling by the day. And then here I can see, okay, next you know available appointment is uh, Chris on Friday, for example. Um, so we can look at a day view also, um, and uh, you know all, all that could be uh, different things that factor into the scheduling. Um, and if I am still scheduling out in several days in advance, maybe I don't want to push that down to the technician. Um, so you can control that too. There's a few different mechanisms for doing that. You can drip feed appointments one at a time, or you can control, all right, let's build a schedule for Friday, but let's not dispatch that out until Thursday afternoon. And then um, you can bulk dispatch all of the work for a given date range. Um, so with that, so far, uh, again, Pam called in. Uh, the generator was beeping. Um, we are going to go out and uh, service the generator. We have scheduled uh, the technician, Ray, uh, to go do that. And so I am just going to bring up uh, my iPad here um, and show you what uh, the technician view would look like. Um, so bear with me one moment. Um, while I'm doing that, um, I will say also that um, we are um, device agnostic, um, so we support um, multiple devices. 
Um, we support Android as well as iOS, as well and phones as well as tablets. Um, so here you can see uh, my iPad. You're looking at a, a real reflection of an, an actual device here. Um, and as I, I tap on things, there there will be um, just a little bit of delay in the um, go to meeting, go to webinar. Uh, but here you can see I've got this appointment for one o'clock today to fix the beeping generator at Saratoga Medical. And if I tap on that, we can drill into the work order. And as a technician, one of the things I might do um, is just, just let the dispatcher know that I'm in transit. And so if I tap in transit, that's actually going to change the status on the dispatch board and update the color. And the dispatcher will know, okay, raise in transit to the site. Um, better ability to serve the customer, more visibility into what's going on. And um, again, if I, um, if you want to, we've got customizable alerts. So we can actually email uh, the customer to let them know um, that I am on my way. Um, and those alerts can be um, triggered based on a variety of different factors. Um, it could be based on uh, um, you know something happening or based on something not happening. In this case, you know, it could be I've set in transit and that's going to fire off an email alert to the customer automatically. Um, as a technician, there's some nice things here um, that I might not have today that maybe help me do my job better. Um, one is um, if I just tap on this little push pin up here, um, it'll actually pull up a map with the um, assets location. And I can see this is about a, a 47 minute drive. I can get um, driving directions um, out to uh, this particular customer location, Saratoga Medical. You know, maybe this isn't a place I've been before. Um, and there you can see uh, the driving directions um, if the uh, webinar is, is updating. There's the driving directions um, in terms of how I would get from uh, point A to point B to, to service this uh, particular asset. Um, so going back to the application, um, I can um, I can see here, I'll just give the uh, um, app a chance to update. Um, I can see the uh, work order hopefully that's coming through on the webinar um, so yeah here's the uh, the work order itself and um, I can tap on these tabs down here at the bottom I can tap on notes and I can see Pam called to say generator 3 is beeping that was the first note that was taken on the call I can also see that photo um, and one nice thing is I can actually um, mark up this photo if I need to um, so maybe this is a site plan or a more detailed diagram um, but I can actually um, change my uh, pin color here and say, you know, uh, there was a, uh, you know, a fault in the control panel or something like that. Um, or maybe it's a crack in that little display case or something. Um, and this will actually go back to the office. Um, not only can I mark up photos coming down from the office to me, I can also um, capture photos with my device or, uh, and, and push those back to the work order. Um, uh, another thing I forgot to do, if I change my status, um, if I hit work started, um, then uh, what can happen is it will auto actually automatically punch me in. So now you can see there's a, a punch clock here that has started to tick up um, associated with my work time. I could also have a, uh, a, a punch clock associated with my travel time if you wanted to as well. Um, so I'm punched in. Um, maybe I'm going to consume some inventory. Uh, again, this is one of those Macola integration points. So this would, um, you know, show all the inventory on the inventory locations that I have access to. So you can see I'm in truck 54, so I have um, visibility into what's on my truck. Um, I can tap a barcode uh, button right here and scan a barcode. Um, I don't have any uh, actual barcodes in front of me, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but I can type, um, and as I type, you'll see if I type F-I-L-T, it's going to pull up any um, part with, um, the letters F-I-L-T in it. Um, I could also search um, part number. Um, so if I type um, BD103, uh, you'll see that it filters down um, to that oil filter. And I've got it in my main warehouse as well as my truck. Um, and so I can, maybe I, I used a couple air filters. Um, and so now we've got that part um, on this uh, work order. Um, I can see, I can tap on repair items and I can see this asset as well as other assets at this site. Um, I can drill into it um, and I can see, you know, okay, it is under contract. I can see the serial number. I can see the latitude, longitude. I can see equipment notes. 
Um, I can even do meter readings if we want to. Um, so this is a, a reading of hours of operation, um, and maybe we're at uh, 2,700 um, now in terms of the hours that we've used. Um, and so I can input uh, meter readings and manually update those. Um, and I can also do forms. Um, so I can um, use uh, our customizable form solution. Um, and here is a uh, generator inspection. So these can be used to do um, various um, types of inspections or any kind of information that you would capture that might be outside the billing information. And you can see I've got some um, things here in red. And so if I try to hit this complete button here at the bottom, it's saying I can't complete this form because I haven't filled out these fields and I can't complete the work order until I filled out this form. Um, so I can come in here and um, these can be drop downs, they can be text questions, and you can also have follow up questions. So if I pick diesel here, um, you can see it's got questions specific to diesel engines. Um, and if I hit yes, and it's asking me about what oil I used, um, I've got to put in the quantity and things like that. Um, and so we'll just hit no to all of these because I didn't um, necessarily have to do anything. Um, but these uh, forms can be built by you in our software. You can do simple forms or you can do very complex ones like you're seeing from me now. Um, and again, if I hit pass, then it, uh, it goes on to the next question. Um, here's one where I can say, um, you know, the charge rate is 120, um, the voltage is 240, um, and the battery charge type is, well, let's just say. Um, and so I can come in here and, and fill out this form um, with all these required fields. Um, I think you guys get the general idea, so I'm gonna just uh, move on um, from this one. Um, but we've got that form there. We've got our punch clock. We've got our labor record. Um, I can also add tasks. Um, so maybe we you know, have like a trip charge or something like that. Um, and that's just gonna be a miscellaneous um, charge on this. Um, so we've got our trip charge. Um, we've got our uh, labor. Um, we've got our inventory. Um, and at this point, I could be done. I could show this to the customer. I could say, here's everything we did. We replaced some oil filters. Um, and the customer can go ahead and sign off. Um, so maybe Pam signs that uh, we were actually out here and um, did the work. And so I can capture Pam's signature. I can uh, put her email in there, and she could get an email copy uh, of all of this. A um, couple other things. We do have history. So if I'm a technician, I want to see who was out here previously, what did they do. Um, I can drill into these and see uh, when was the last time we replaced these oil filters, which seem to be causing so many problems. And I can drill in and see uh, other uh, technicians' notes and what they did. Um, and then I can also um, see you know, who the contacts are at this site. Um, so this is you know, um, pretty robust information here. Um, as a technician, this is, again, just something that helps me do my job. Um, if I get here and I don't know who to check in with, that's going to affect, uh, you know, our customer's happiness level versus if I get here, um, they get an email the moment I arrive. Um, I can, you know, call Pam, let her know I'm here, um, you know, take photos and, and send that back to the customer. Uh, those are all things that, again, make our company look good in our customer's eyes. Um, so at, at this point, again, I'm done. And um, we'll go back to the back office um, screen very briefly here. Um, and so if we go to the back office screen, um, and if I just refresh this, um, we'll see some lines coming in. Um, there's my generator inspection, there's my trip charge, um, there's my labor, and there's my oil filter. Um, this would all go to Macola, and um, you could you know, generate an invoice um, right then and there. So um, speeding up your billing, uh, increasing visibility, increasing customer satisfaction, um, all in the span of about 20 minutes. Um, that's um, what we had planned. Oh, I got a couple more things. I apologize. Um, almost a, a false finish there. Um, well, a couple other quick things we wanted to show, contracts and PMs. Um, we've got the ability to, uh, if you do recurring work on uh, pieces of equipment or assets or just recurring work at a site, um, this is a contract. This is on a, a wheel loader, um, and uh, here we can see, here's this Caterpillar wheel loader, and we're going to go out and service this based on a meter reading uh, every 1,000 hours. And so every 1,000 hours, we're actually going to do three different types of service. 
We'll do uh, type of service at 250, at 500, at 750, essentially, you know, all kinds of different oil changes. And um, I can see the different work that's going to happen each time this machine hits 250, 500, 750 hours. And basically what our system is doing is you would build this contract when you sell it to the customer to do your preventative maintenance cycle. Um, and then whenever this comes due, whenever that asset hits this particular meter reading, uh, we can actually automatically generate uh, this work order with all of these line items. And um, it could even go to a preferred technician if you want to. Or it could go to the schedule board and be scheduled just like that break fix work order that we ran through. Um, so uh, really nice capability if you do any type of preventative maintenance. Um, very robust capabilities around this. And, and handling that and saving you time and creating the work order every time. You don't have to go to Excel and say, okay, what's do this maintenance interval? Um, again, this one was a meter-based contract. It could also be date-based of just, hey, four times a year, we're gonna come out and service um, your site or your equipment. Uh, last one, and then we'll uh, save some time for questions. We do have a customer portal, and this customer portal lets your customers log in and see the status of their work. Um, so here I can see all right, um, we've got um, four orders. Three of those are in progress. One of those is completed. And um, we can you know, see all kinds of information uh, in terms of um, what was done, uh, again, just logging into a web portal. Um, or again, we can send emails based on um, you know, things happening like the work order being closed. Um, so with that, um, Mike, are we going back to slides? Are we going straight to uh, Q&A? Uh, yeah, we are. We're finished with the slides. So yes, at this point, okay. I think we're ready to to move into uh, any questions that may have come up. Thanks, Ray, for walking through all that. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks again, everyone, uh, and Vicky, Mike, and Ray. And like we said, let's start by answering some questions. Um, we are going to start with a softball, which is, can we get this presentation to share with other employees? And the answer is yes. Uh, you will get that information tomorrow. Um, and our next question is, um, is all the customer information pulled up during a call coming from McCola and or Synergy? So the, sh the short answer is yes. Uh, the longer answer is there are um, some pieces of information which reside solely in Service Pro, um, but the, the core customer information, McCola really is the source of truth for that. Um, so it really is. Um, where that information is coming from, um, you, you'd, you'd modify that in McCola and then it'd pull over into Service Pro. Um, again, our goal with, with the integration is to eliminate any uh, duplicate data entry, any place where there might be conflicting records. So McCola is the source of the customer information. We're pulling it over into Service Pro, um, but typically things like that asset information, um, that is uh, typically Service Pro only information, and some of that might uh, there might be custom fields or things like that that might really reside only in Service Pro. So um, hope that answers the question. Great. Uh, next question is, you mentioned Bird Dog's tools earlier. Are those required for your solution? Um, this is um, Mike. So, so the um, the not re not required, but it is required if you if you want to take advantage of the integration. Uh, cer certainly, um, Bird Dog is uh, can, are turned to them as the expert in integrating with McCola, and so uh, they their uh, their connector uh, really manages the data that goes back and forth between McCola and Service Pro. Great. Our next question is: When does confirm ship occur in the work order? Uh, I might need a little bit more detail in terms of what they mean in confirm ship. Um, if that's a McCola task or function, I'm not uh, necessarily a McCola expert. Um, I, I do know there are some uh, options as far as relieving inventory. Um, so some of our customers' uh, inventory will be decremented the moment it gets added to the work order. Others, you can um, perform a shipping step, which will be the process of relieving inventory, and you can control kind of when you ship that. You might ship it when the technician's done, or maybe actually physically ship the parts out to a, a secondary location or something like that. So I don't know if that answers uh, Ray, the question. Ray, this is Vicki. That is a confirmed ship is a McCola feature. So Stephanie, okay. I think what we should do on that question is um, just take that and we'll supply that answer uh, later, you know, when we send out the um, 
the webinar, the recording, we'll get that answer from uh, Bird Dog as when it happens in the in the connectivity of the integrator. Okay, great. Uh, we can definitely follow up on that. Um, I have a few more questions, but we've got a little bit more time, so if anybody has um, other questions that they want to submit, that's still open as well, so feel free to do that. Um, the next question is, what types of mobile devices does the mobile technician app run on? Yeah, the, the um, uh, mobile devices that we support, um, we are cross-platform and we are native, so it does work on um, iOS and Android. Uh, it does work on uh, Windows 10 PCs as well. Um, so you can have an iPhone, an iPad, really any Android device, phone or tablet, um, and any Windows 10 device, again, uh, laptop or tablet. And um, we are a native app, which means it'll work offline. So once I have the work order, once it's been dispatched to me and it's on my device, I could actually lose connectivity multiple times. I could go totally offline. I could be underground or just in a place where I don't get service, and I could still do everything you saw me do in the demo. I need a connection to send it back to the office, um, but um, I can, uh, you know, or to get new work, but um, all the things you saw me do in terms of inventory and punch clocks and things like that, those are all capabilities that can be done 100% uh, offline. Excellent. The next question is, how long does it take to implement Service Pro? Great question. Um, implementation is, is really highly dependent on scope. Um, like I said, you know, the uh, um, capabilities that you saw today was a, a pretty robust um, tour of things. Um, some customers may not use all of that, um, but I'd say a typical implementation for us is probably in the span of 60 to 90 days. Uh, maybe up to 120 days for the more complex ones. Um, obviously, depends as much on the customer as it does us. And, and if it's part of a larger ERP uh, rollout or you know upgrade or implementation, um, that that can certainly add to some of the timeline as well. Great, I'm sure that's very helpful. Um, and finally, the next question: Can we can it be used in a repair center with in-house technicians? Absolutely, yeah. The, the scenario we saw today was what we would term field service, um, but a number of our customers do in-house repair as well or shop service. Um, some, you know, customers of ours will do both shop and field. Others will do purely shop. Um, but again, there's a lot of configuration options where um, I, I don't necessarily have to be scheduling somebody to go out. It could just be within a shop. I could be scheduling repairs to specific bays, um, you know, again, filtering based on skill sets, tracking what customer's equipment is being dropped off or shipped in, um, and things like that. Great. Uh, it looks like that's the end of our questions. Um, I'll give everybody just another, just a few more seconds if that, anyone has a last minute question they want to lob our way. Okay, thanks again to everyone for attending today's webinar. If you do have questions in the future, please contact us at Macola Software at ecisolutions.com. And once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey, and we would greatly appreciate it if you could share your feedback with us. And finally, as I mentioned earlier, tomorrow you'll, you'll receive a link to view the recording of today's webinar. Um, thanks again for joining us, and everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.